Aaron Davies with the break. 50 minutes on the match clock. Race to seven. And Nick Finn and Simon Webb with you on commentary. And Nick, this is a, a really good battle. Aaron's quietly having a very good weekend. And uh, Goobsy is just back to form. He's back to the Scott Gillespie we have known for many years. Absolutely, yeah. I, I've been keeping an eye on this, on, on both of their progress, to be honest. And um, I think this could be a, a very close game. They've already met once this weekend. If you look at their head-to-head, -head, they've only uh, they've only seemed to have met once before. There's only one in the uh, in the files anyway, and that was in event seven, which were ended up five each and a six red shootout, which Scott Gillespie just pipped Aaron to the post. Yeah, it was a good comeback actually from Aaron. He, Scott will probably feel like he should have won the match. Aaron came back and, and kind of made it a six red. He, Scott actually had a chance in that. 11th frame to get a buzzer beater didn't take it missed quite early on and that was the the six red but was able to get the job done in the six red Aaron went first and set 30 seconds or thereabouts and and Scott had the the control and the poise to to beat it it was a really exciting match actually just enough out there happening to make it quite exciting all the way through been the big talking point of the weekends is the tables and how tight they are and and it has changed play every player I've interviewed every player I've spoken to they, they've said it, we've had to change our patterns we've had to think about the games differently more breaking balls out from cushions but more really working on the pattern which is exciting and Scott Gillespie is very positive about them himself I haven't spoken to Aaron about the tables actually he's one of the players I haven't got to yet but I think, uh, I think this is only the second time that Aaron's played on this table over the weekend as well. I don't think he's he's been at it too often. Scott's been at it a few times, so I don't know if that just plays slightly into Scott's hands. But I mean, all the tables are the same. It's slightly different environment, slightly different conditions here to the outside tables, but it's nice to see well, it, it, identical tables across all of the it, rooms. It is, but even even with the identical tables now, the players are still saying they're playing. You know, they, for whatever reason, you know, Sean Chipperfield played out a couple of matches ago and he said I just couldn't get the feel I, I've been playing on the other tables throughout the weekend and th this just plays that little bit quicker and and to be honest I know it's easy to say there's there's bigger lights on this table than there is on on the others which there are but those lights don't really generate any heat it it is bizarre to think that there obviously has to be a reason for it because it, it is a is a real thing but it, it does play that just touch quicker that touch different yeah I mean Look at Jordan Shepard, for example. He he struggled this weekend on the outside tables. He came off of this table yesterday and he said it was absolutely fantastic. He loved it. He broke really well and uh, dominated. And then this morning he's come out and lost 7-1 to Sean Shepard on one of the outside tables. And while we're talking about that, Aaron's made a very good start. Brilliant breaking clearance and he get, takes the opening frame. But as you say, he's, he's yet to lift any, any silverware. This is a great chance for him now over this weekend. Of course, Sean's story awaits him in the semi-final if he were to win this match. Explosive break, but nothing happening. Really explosive break. Been a big feature, actually, of Scott's play. Getting through that break incredibly well for a long time now. But not this time, results-wise. Yellow and red, just below the eight ball, have come together and will cause a bit of a headache. I actually think more than that, it's hard to hard to see a way to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. How do you break them out? I mean, if you go yellows, there is a yellow adjacent to it to to break it. But I mean, yeah, the yellow top right's awful. The yellow, if the yellow down the table is easier to break out than the red, it's a, it's a really tricky little problem he has. Yeah. Gonna have to take reds. It's just not options for yellows here. He's got the one. He's got one up to top right. He's got a line that he could come back down and attack that area. But the trouble is that could easily go wrong. What do you leave yourself? Now he's looking at maybe the possibility of leaving an angle on the one to middle to come down and get into the um, into that little problem cluster. I think whichever way he goes here, he's going to have the, the line to find the cannon 
It's just so tight. Yeah, it's got to be hopeful to come back to the table. It, it's a horrible one as well because it, it's a layout that you, you look at as a player out there. And you've only got 30 seconds to analyse it as well. And you're looking at anything. Yeah, I should I should go for these. I've, I've got to get these. Because you, your problem doesn't look that bad. But the problem is really bad. And it's a tough one to solve. It hasn't looked to move it yet. Do you think that means that maybe there's more, more of the red showing than possible? Maybe you could turn it in. It, it doesn't look like it at all. I mean, if it, if it doesn't go, I'm not sure what his plan for it is because he's not looked like trying to leave an angle to get on it. So he doesn't look concerned about it at the moment. So maybe we're, we're making a mountain out of a molehill and perhaps it actually does go. It's going to be tight. Oh, he's, he's got an angle now. He's got an angle on the one in the middle of the table to come down into that area. So here we go. Key to the frame coming up right here. He'll take that. It's not ideal, but he's got a shot at least. I mean, it's really tough because you're dragging the one in with side to the top right-hand corner and you're going to leave yourself a horrible shot. But it could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot better as well. I actually think the one at the top on second thoughts might be too thin to play the shot I'm talking about. In which case he's got to maybe float this in and come down for a double. He's playing that shot, loading up with left-hand side. Trying to hold the cue ball. Needs that to hold up or run. That's absolutely no good. Oh, that was so hard to get yeah, that right. It really was. Let's just say it was so thin. A little bit more pace, actually, it would have hit that knuckle and come out and probably landed perfectly on it, but hindsight's easy to call that now. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> that is not the first time we've seen something like that today. Strange things are happening out there. Aaron Davies with a moment of absolute magic and maybe just a touch of fortune as well. That was brilliant. Can't keep putting yourself under pressure. I, mean, I suppose it's still very early here, but certainly Aaron Davies has the advantage right now. Oh, I feel like that red's got to drop. It hasn't. It wasn't the best of best of breaks, in all honesty. Is it slightly soft opening? Yeah, the cue ball looks like it's done okay. It looks like a solid enough hot contact. They just didn't explode. You thought the red was going to come and flick that, uh, the cue ball was going to come and flick yeah. that red in, but only just missed it. And then the other red coming catches the bottom knuckle. And um, the one thing he won't mind seeing is that big cluster of balls over on the right-hand side, because it just means that Scott Gillespie has work. Last thing you want when you dry break is to let your opponent into the table with a really simple clearance. There is a lot of work though, isn't there? This is this is a challenge for Scott Gillespie to get going. His first opportunity in the match, first uh, first hand on the table in the match so far. I think he's trying to leave an angle on the red to middle where he can screw across into the pack. He can still do it, but he's quite close to his work. Yeah, and as a result, he just comes below. And oof, that's nasty. Oh, just important not to foul here. He gets this one slightly wrong. Even if he'd shaved the, the red, he wasn't going to do any damage. Needed to get into the yellow pretty solid. Just don't foul because the yellows are bad as well. But if, if you gave Aaron Kubel a hand, it actually would be able to open things up with his first shot. So important not to foul and he hasn't. It didn't matter if he left the pots on. He just needed to not, not give Kubel a hand. He has left. The yellow in the middle of the three, 
with an angle to run through into the red, which would push the other yellow on. And I think the outside yellow of the three passes to right centre, so he's not looking at that whatsoever. But I think that shot is on. No attempt. Obviously just a safety. Yeah, I think we'd have seen other more aggressive players. I mean, if Sean Chipperfield was at the table, I don't see him taking turning down that opportunity. To say the yellow on the middle of the three in that cluster. Aaron, quite a measured player though. He's not overly aggressive. If they're there, he will go for them. Uh, that was the yellow I mentioned a second ago, the one just at the bottom of this cluster. I'm pretty sure it passes the red into the middle. Again, Aaron not looking at it. Doesn't want to take it on because he knows the red's tied up, so he's just going to still keep things tight. Just wants an opportunity to promote a few of his, his balls. Yeah, that's one of them off the cushion. And that's the the order of the day for him at the moment. Is just he he feels that the percentages aren't, aren't in his favour. As long as he's got that yellow on the left side cushion and that cluster on the right hand side, he doesn't want to break it out. He's trying to force Scott into going for it. The yellows are slightly better positioned. Aaron playing the percentages. Oh, oh what goodness, what a plant. Oh <laughs> that's actually really unlucky. That's why that's why uh, Scott's uh, laughing. He's got an angle. He's, he's left an angle to come over and break break this pack out. I mean he just can't believe he's made both, but you're right, he has got an angle, but it is now all legs in one basket. He has to go here. That's an incredible plant. Yeah, I needed to catch yellow on the left hand side and try and break everything open he's digging a bit of a hole now he's looking at cushion first into the back of the red but even if he gets it he's going to have another problem ball after this is certainly going to open everything up <laughs> what's your next trick Scott Gillespie <laughs> What is going on out there? <laughs> I mean, how? <laughs> it's a m the shots he's made in this visit so far is ridiculous, and he's absolutely nowhere. The trouble is, it, it, it's playing into Aaron's hands because now the other ball that's tied up, Scott's now going to free it. No attempt for anything aggressive there. He he really didn't have any options to be just bumping it into the middle of the table and, and asking a question of Aaron, but Aaron's massive favourite to win the frame. Yeah, Aaron would love to be able to move the yellow on the left-hand side cushion and try and find a snooker, but I don't think that's an option. He's going to have to run for cover on the right-hand side. Does need to be careful, though. He needs to wait this. It's not like he's got a wall of balls to hide behind. He's got to find the right pace. No. Leaked out too far. Well, Scott Gillespie is rewarded for not just throwing his arm at it. He has a shot. It's not a nice one, but he has a shot. The pot's one thing, but how on earth do you get onto the eight ball? Yeah. He's got to get underneath it somehow. Yeah, good luck. Wow, what an effort that is. <laughs> Great pop. What an effort that is. I mean, he's absolutely nowhere still, but... I mean, this is a shot-making exhibition in this match so far. Yeah. I know he's not on this eight ball in terms of a pot, um, potting it, but when he was on the bottom cushion and all he could see was the thinnest edge of it last visit, he had taken this. He's looked at it off the yellow on the right-hand side. He's now looking at the combination shot, but 
That's such a great effort, isn't it? <laughs> when, <laughs> I, that, that would have been something else because I've, I've never seen a combo played for, for, with that much distance away from the pocket. And, and it's not even... I mean, it's offset. Yeah, offset. It, it well, did well to even get close. What he's hoping, though, is that the eight ball blocks the yellow, which he may well have done. He saw him have a really good look at it. The yellow on the left-hand side is, is a problem here. Yeah. But Aaron has got a couple of balls he could use to move it. I don't think he can do it here because I think the yellow's just in the way of the path. Oh, he could. He could. That's a good shot. Yeah, now we'll go and run to a 3-0 lead here. I mean, it is amazing to think, you know, we could do a highlight reel on the, the quality of shots that Scott Gillespie has pe played in this frame. Yeah. And he's going to lose it, barring something strange happening. This is a sign of how tight the tables are for me. He's moving the yellow on the right-hand side. Yeah, I was going to say he needs to be careful here because that was the only ball he could land on in playing that way. He would have been on the one to top left, but it's a little bit tricky. I don't think he plays that on on the tables we were using last time we were here in Blackpool. I think he drops the one in bottom right, gets straight on the one he's just um, played in the middle and then plays the one down the cushion thereafter. Maybe he had a touch too much angle to bottom right, but... I think the table changed the choice there. Nice punch. He's left a good, good angle here. Come up table. I don't think he'll want to come cushion side of the yellow. I think he's going to want... I mean, he's got he's got choices here. He could leave himself in the middle of the table for, for the one to middle with the eight ball looming over the pocket. He can take the one to top left as his last ball. That's a perfect weight. Lovely. Just drop this in the middle. And he's got a couple of simple shots to finish up with. ball yeah played it well if you hit that any thinner there is a, a natural line straight to the to the middle pocket and you could see him just dragging that cue ball just to send it a little bit wider Aaron Davis actually made the court final for three straight tournaments himself court final in the European Open and obviously lost out to Scott Gillespie in the court finals in event Seven, and here he is again. Yeah, he's just starting to build momentum, isn't he? Well, he wants to be Reds, but the only one he's got is the one that's to the left of the eight ball. I say Reds because of where the yellow is just below the eight. That is a bit of a problem. You can definitely make a case for yellows, but to say that that one below is is just a bit of a problem. So he's going to have a long testing opener. If he gets this right, cues it well. Oh dear! Not happening for Scott right now. No, it's not. I think he felt playing at that pace. He couldn't fail to be on something towards the top of the table. Didn't expect to leak in behind those yellows. Now he's got a treacherous double. No. Missed it by some way as well. We've seen that a couple of times over the course of the day. Sean Chipperfield played a much easier double than that earlier. Missed it by... Four or five inches. Scott equally far away with that, but it wasn't easy. He did get 
the second part of the equation right in that he's not left Aaron anything easy to go after. So Aaron's just going to look at playing a little safety shot. But again, it's another one who needs to just be careful. In fact, is he, I was just about to say, is he taking a double? Yeah, he didn't feel that the um, didn't feel that the safety was on. Scott already looking to see whether the eight ball goes into into bottom right. It definitely goes into left centre. If it doesn't pass the bottom right, that was a a big risk there from Aaron. And if he gets that double, it does pay dividends because the yellows were there, but. He's, he's one of the best on the tour at the doubles, though. He's so confident with them. Just a little bit surprised. I thought he just might might try the uh, the defensive option there. He obviously felt that the safety shot was too difficult. And that one is another one that's got away from, from Scott Gillespie. He was playing on the ball. It's closest to the right corner pocket. Another one. Got it to middle, but the cue ball's tracking away from from where he wants to be. He's going to have to play this into the middle and, and screw off the top cushion. Unless he can just have enough nice. Oh, he is topping it, so maybe he can just he just had the position have to play another one here. Close to his work, he needs to come around two cushions. Back across for the red that's below this one into Got the same pocket. Got to find a good line and a good pace. Yep. The eight ball's not wide open at the bottom. I think the eight ball does pass the bottom right. I think he's decided that it, that it does. That needs to run. Just got there. Yeah, he's looking again. Do you if think he is there though? Do you think he can play this slow enough to, to hold for eight, eight ball bottom right? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. His problem is if it doesn't go to bottom right then it's it's hard to get where he's pointing now. Well, I think he must have decided that it doesn't go to bottom right and he's going to come try and come twice across the table. Oh, well, well, the well. Yeah. Would have been on the eight ball awkwardly, but he would have been on it. Big frame 4-0, 3-1. Now that Scott's missed another chance, two in the frame he's had. This could really start to break the back of the match. Coming up on the halfway point on the clock as well. One bad ball on the table for Aaron. And enough room to play short position. Yeah, he can go up for it now. If he wants to. Doesn't have to though, he could use the one top left to get across. Yep. It should be easy to leave himself a three-quarter ball angle, which gives him all the room in the world. Doesn't want to be straight. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's fine. Good. I'll play above it or underneath it here, depending on what pocket. Underneath it, you've got one option. Go above it, you've got a chance to be on the centre or the corner. He had so much room to play with, confident enough to get there that he's landed plumb. Thanks, it's a cue ball on off the top cushion. Leaves a lovely angle just to punch this in and hold for the last yellow. And looking. Odds on now to go four in front. It's all Aaron Davis at the moment. In fairness to Scott Gillespie, he's not had too many Giltos chances. It would be a strange feeling for Scott. 4 0 down, 2 0 before he had a shot. And in the last two frames, he has had chances, but nothing you could really say, oh, he should get these. Yeah, yeah he, he's got pretty close to chasing one there. Yeah, he shouldn't have missed the pot, but. 
It was going to be difficult to get on the eight ball. You felt like he's just had big shots to play in. Well, even that, really uh, tough. that Aaron Davis dry break, I mean, when Scott came to the table, he had that great big cluster of balls on the right-hand side. It's just been a mess every single time. A player that normally fights to deep, but every now and then... Wow. Now how much is that going to be a game-changer? That's unbelievable. That's a great break. Cue ball straight back up the middle of the table. So unlucky to get kicked in off. Look at this. I mean, he can't have... He can't have got that break much better. And look at the layout. I mean, this is 5 0 all over it if he doesn't get kicked in there. And it's moments like that that can change a game. What's he do here? Interesting one. Really can make a case for both here. Yellow above the eight ball makes yellows slightly tricky. If you take reds, they are all really simple. It's then what's the route and where's the eight ball going? Yeah, I quite like the yellows because I think you can just drop this in the middle and then do that. I mean, but he's leaked away again. I mean, he's tried to hold four ball contact for a straight yellow to middle to then get across the left-hand side of the table, but he's left a big angle. I mean, it's still on, but it's just, it's just that little touch that's not there for him at the moment. He's actually left such a big ang angle that he's okay. Yeah. He may not have played for the yellow on the left-hand side there. He may well have just played to get back down and have a, s a shot down the table. Probably more likely than not the one in the centre of the table to bottom right, but having options of the bottom left. The reason I say that is that yellow top left becomes a great last ball for the eight ball. just needs to think about his route here it, I think well you can see there the yellow does pass to to left centre the one that's just above the cue ball now so this isn't too bad they all link up pretty well you can just drop this one in drop the next one in leave an angle well leave yourself fairly straight just to get across for the yellow at the top of the table eight ball waiting in the middle and this should quickly be four frames to one Aaron will be cursing his luck in the corner because at 5 now you think the game has gone. But at 4-1, Scott Gillespie is back in it. Yeah, finish, finish pretty much dead straight. So just drop this in and run through a few inches. Just make sure he's not hampered queuing. Which he does. Scott Gillespie needed this frame and he's made no mistakes in what was a very good opportunity and he is on the board a few frames later than he would have hoped and that was off Aaron's break as well he's, he will have the next break chance to really cut into what was 4-0 as it's now 4-1 um, I'll come back to mine in a minute after this break and well look at this layout and suddenly that in-off from Aaron Davis, that unlucky in-off with this layout looks like, as it often does, could cost him two frames. I was just about to mention that uh, over in uh, Challenger Tier 1, the dream of the back-to-back -back for Rob Dagnall has, um, has come unstuck. Jake Dillon Newlove's beaten him 6-5 in the quarter-final, but what a weekend Rob Dagnall's had. Winning Event 7, quarter-final in Event 8, only to be beaten in a hill-hill game by the butcher and uh, the semi-finals starting to take shape in that uh, in that tier one Jack Schofield also threw into the semi-final Zach Cooper on the hill against Martin Hazel and Daryl Whitworth is 3-2 uh, up against Tom Church so. Nice to see Daryl have a good run a player that you feel 
probably should be in the pro ranks in terms of his game, although I'd say that about most of the names that you've, you've just read out, especially yeah. Jake Dillon. You Jake love him. Well, he's a yeah. fabulous player. Nice to see Zach Cooper have a have a run. Big fan of Zach's game. Now Scott just taking his time to work this one out. It is pretty much there for him. Doesn't really need to play anything big. Just keep it simple. He had an option there. And it's interesting to see the way he's played it. He had the option. He could have dropped that in yellow left centre. But then if he gets the wrong angle, then he might have a problem getting on the other yellow at the bottom of the table. And he could have just got himself t a touch tangled, which is why he's come up the table. And in fact, he's actually come a touch too far up. But controlled that one well and he only had to do was leave the other yellow at the top of the table as his connection to the eight ball so even with the layout that looks well I'd hate using the word but simple it still needs you to give it that extra second of thought just to make sure and make it simple and that's what Scott Gillespie has done and oh how one piece of Misfortune for Aaron Davis getting kicked in off can change a match. From 4 0, not quite probably would have been 5 0. Now going to be 4 2. He'll start to feel the pressure now. He also start to look at the clock because half an hour gone, 20 minutes left. The last time these two met, it ended up 5 apiece and a 6 red shootout. Are we on track for that again? Aaron Davies will hope not. Not from 4 1 in 4 4 0 in front as it was, but now 4 2. Important break this one. Another absolute cruncher of a break. Sends the cue ball straight back at the middle of the table. And yet again, this time it's dry. And it's just starting, just starting to unravel from 4 0 up and absolutely dominating. A massive swing. And who knows? When he comes back to the table, it could be all square at four each. And that's going to need a lot of effort from Scott Gillespie because this isn't the best layout. It's a tricky layout if he was 4 0 down. It's a tricky layout at 0 0. But you feel more confident that he might make this because he's just taken out two back to back off the break. Yeah, because I mean, it's tricky but doable. Yeah, yeah. All, all the yellows definitely have a pocket, but it's just, <clears throat> it, I mean, it's going to need some really good cue ball here. It's about the order he takes them in. I think a key for me is does the does the yellow by the eight ball pass the other yellow on the cushion? If it does, that gets him access to the one on the cushion, and then he can play the gap, and and then he's got he's almost got a route laid out for him. Yeah, I've been looking at that myself, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't. And that's why he's come down for the one on the cushion now, just to get it off the table, get it out of the way. Clever, because he can leave straight in top right here, yeah. or, or pull back for right centre if it goes, but I like top right, and then use the one at the top of the table to get on the one bottom right, and, and you're away, so you have to say, he's picked out a great pattern. Wants this to be absolutely straight in doesn't want to be going into the eight ball doesn't want to be going up the left hand side line he wants to just be able to top this through so he can cue to the right hand side of the eight ball yeah I think it's perfect yeah, it was just a touch touch meant he was going up the left hand side but he'll take that it's a little bit of a cutback but he's got all the room in the world on the right hand side of the table yeah yeah that's the bonus here. there's nothing to do with the cue ball he can just stun it across to the side rail and out the closer he gets to straight on the next ball, though, the better. He won't want to leave three-quarter ball. He'd like to get somewhere somewhere near the straight. Yeah, that's fine. He might have to use the top cushion. It should be absolutely fine here. There was a little grimace when... Uh when the cue ball landed, but I think it's okay. He's just got that one turn of angle that this will go towards the eight ball. Yeah, 
Whereas if he's dead straight, it's a stun shot. Yeah. Just having to use the top cushion. It was going on a on a bad line where the pace was important. I think the pattern he's picked out here has been brilliant. Really is the straight away my thought process was you do the ones at the top of the table, then come down and obviously it was a question mark over the one by the eight ball going bottom left, but getting on that one on the cushion and playing top right just made the made the finish. And uh, a brilliant pattern. And as simple as he could make it. Back within one. And even more importantly, back on serve. Because it's his break in the next. From 4 nil in front, Aaron Davies has played two shots. An in-off break and a dry break. Yeah. Another monster. Yeah, and not a bad layout. Work, but not, you know, it's not undoable. It's not unsolvable. Another one where pattern's going to be key. Looks like it has to be reds. Two reds together near the top half of the table. Slightly tricky, but does the left hand one of the two probably passes the other one? So then it's a case of how do you play a, a little breakout or super short position? The rest of the reds are absolutely fine. The red just the left of the yellow passes to. I think he can, he can take it to either top right or top left. How we deal to those three at the top? I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he tries to do. So I thought the last last visit was such a, a brilliant pattern. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can come up with this time round. And actually, I mean, if he can get high on the the red at the top of the table now he could actually he can actually land in behind the red and play short position because that red that's above the yellow will pass into top left it just depends on his angle now and it depends how he sees it he needs that to travel if that's the shot he's going to play he needed that to travel he's quite that's short here a bit straight yeah if that travels another three or four inches he can just play short position I don't think that option's there now right centre's an option then right centre doesn't really help you unless you have the absolute perfect angle that you can just bump through and half ball the yellow yeah this is going to be tricky from here that's the wrong angle yeah. you saw from his reaction immediately he needed that cue ball to travel back another half a roll he was looking for exactly the shot that you mentioned a second ago I mean if the right if the right pocket was cleared, this would just about be the perfect angle, but of course it doesn't it doesn't go down there, so now suddenly this is a lot more difficult than it would have been. And it's just half a roll. He's playing the double. Oh no. This is where you've got to be so mentally strong as a yeah. professional ball player. Aaron has had to sit there and take punishment. From 4 0 up, this is his first time he's touched the table, and he has to find a, try and find a, a tactical exchange and then deliver. Yeah, I think, I think he's on the yellow. That's furthest up the table. I think he can. I don't think he should take it on. No. Balls at the bottom are, are not good. I, mean, I suppose you've got options to deal with the one bottom right. So maybe if he is on it, maybe he should he's, go. He's going to play the little snook. He's going to screw him behind the yellow. Yeah, that's that's what I thought he would do straight away. Was I think Aaron? I think other players, if, if that if he was on that one at the top of the table, may have been aggressive. But Aaron has an all-round game, and I think this table helps him with that as well. The game becomes more about playing pool rather than just all out and out dishing. I think that's a very good decision. Yeah, simple enough escape, but hard to leave safe, and that's why he's given it. A bit of a hit. He actually won't necessarily mind that. This time round, Aaron may be more tempted because he's not guaranteed to get a snooker. Certainly not first shot. So you can pot the yellow top right, and then it's about leaving the right angle on one of the balls, probably the one just above the eight ball, to play the breakout. If he doesn't get it right, he could he could try and play a loss of turn down here, cannon off the yellow, put the red. Yeah, maybe just a, a glance off the yellow to bottom right. Not obviously not for this shot. 
pot the pot the red and try and snooker in behind the yellow. May just be overthinking that, but it is an option. <coughs> Has he left an angle? He's got a slight angle on the on the yellow just above the eight ball to punch across. Yes, oh super shot, and the cue ball holds on as well. That really is a top shot. He judged that absolutely. Perfectly. I mean, he, he's stuck in the jaws of the pocket. Another half a roll, and that cue ball is going to follow it in. But <laughs> love that reaction. <laughs> he's riding it out oh, there. He's, he's got Gillespie, and <laughs> we're he's looking missed. at that. A mistake from Aaron, and I mean, it was tough from the jaws there. We'll have another look. This was a tough shot. This was essentially frame ball, really. And well, it hasn't left it easy here. For Scott, he'll be glad to get to the table, but I mean, what's he going to do? Double with a loading up the the cue ball here? Yes, is the answer. <laughs> oh, oh, stop it! Oh, that would have been special. <laughs> that would have been special, and Scott Gillespie knows it. He's played some shots in this match. Ah. <laughs> uh. He's wearing his heart on his sleeve today. Yeah. He really is. He's leaving it all out there. A lot of nervous tension, you can tell. He gave out a great big roar when he uh, when he won his match last night. Oh, oh my goodness, my that was going in. That was heart of the pocket. That was going in. That was absolutely dead set centre. What do you have to do? My word. And actually, with all these fun and games going on, it can be quite disconcerting for, for, for Aaron. He, he's, uh, he needs to settle. He needs to settle himself because, um, you know, he's already missed that ball to middle, which you didn't expect him to miss. Um, this is, There's a lot of pressure on this frame. A lot of pressure on this frame. There's one he's going to be desperate to win. He needs to... needs to pull out a big shot here. Yeah, he was just a little bit too straight on that. Well, he's got... A choice of either yellow. He's going to play the one through the gap. And don't forget, now we are down into the last 10 minutes as well. So it's the 15 second clock, which is going to add a little bit more pressure. That's an excellent That's shot. That's really good. <laughs> 15 seconds a shot. The pressure of that situation and to have to slow roll that. That was so missable. Yeah. I actually fancied him. I really thought he was going to miss that one. And Aaron's a great player, but... I put myself in in that moment and thought, oh, I don't fancy this. I just, I just had a feeling that that he was going to come unstuck on, on, you know, he had five simple balls, but the pressure of the situation. But fair play to him, that really shows so much character in getting that clearance. Wow, that's a massive frame. Scott Gillespie, a little shake of the head. Hats off to Aaron, great character. But again, he needs to make a ball. And his break is not working for him. It's deserted him. Since 4-0, oh, it has deserted wow. him. And look at the layout. Look at this layout. I mean, it... it mm, 5-3. Eight minutes left. Is there some deja vu? Are we going to finish it five each in a six-red shootout? Surely not. I mean, if Aaron makes a ball there... Goes six three up, burn a few minutes off the clock. He will be in complete control of this match. And look, the ball's hanging, right centre, top left corner. He will feel very hard done by not making a ball there. Scott frustrated again because he's just finished a little bit straight on this ball. I think he was trying to come back a bit further. He's still okay though. I mean, 
you see the score line, Aaron Davis. You, you, you'd rather be in Aaron's in Aaron's shoes every day and twice on Sunday, but you just feel that there's another twist in the tail coming on this one. You just feel it's not over yet. Scott Gillespie needs this frame and the next to draw level. And it's still in Aaron's hands. He's going to have the break if it does go to five each, but his break's not working at the moment. What an intriguing game. Yeah, it feels like deja vu as well. Yeah. Five each was the scoreline last time they played. A couple of days ago. It's going to be 5-4 with this eight ball. And we're going to have 6.20 left to play. Getting ready to drive through the pack. That's a fabulous break. Whack. It's a fabulous break. Incredible. Oh, well, Aaron will be fearing the worst. Look at this table. Look at the yellows. Look at the yellows. I mean, these are going to be gone in a minute. Massive. Ooh. You are riding your luck, Scott Gillespie. You are riding your luck, sir. As soon as you let go of that, you could see catches the knuckle of the middle pocket. And that would have been... The game would have been up if that went in off. Shouldn't have been anywhere near the middle pocket, really. It's going to be all square, isn't it? It's <laughs> what a match. And credit Scott Gillespie here. It's one thing for Aaron Davies to, to suddenly dry up on his break. It's another for your opponent, in Scott in this case, to fully take advantage of it in the way he has. There's been some drama in this one. I mean, there's 4.40 left on the clock. <laughs> we could still see someone get the seven. Five each. All the pressure of the world on Aaron Davies' shoulders on this break. Has to make a ball. Has to keep the cue ball on the table. Needs a good layout. It's not been working for him so far, but he needs one right now. No, no way. No way. That's incredible. How many no jaws has he hit there? How many jaws did he rattle? Now, there is some good news here for Aaron Davies. Reds are the colour set here, and Scott Gillespie, I don't believe, has a red on. So, there is some hope, because if he has to take yellows, what does he do with the two at the top of the table? Well, I mean, the question also, where's the opening yellow? Because is he not knuckled on this one? I thought he was sat behind the knuckle, but I know he could get through. He could just get through. But you're absolutely right. What's the plan for the yellows at the top of the table? So, could this be a lifeline for Aaron Davies? Scott Gillespie is going to have to pull out another monster finish here. But he will be over the moon to be at the table. It's going to be all about the combination shot. If he gets this, it's game over. It's and so he good. Does. Obviously, Scott Gillespie has such a big background. He's a Black Ball World Champion where the combination has been obviously around an awful lot longer than players coming through the other side. But there really is a lot, something about Scottish players and combination shots. They're incredibly good at them. By and large. Ooh, is that the hold up? Oh, now it's delicate. 
it's actually nice to have the angle, but now you've got a pot to a half a blind pocket, come across the table and find a gap. And he's loading it up his side. Oh my no. goodness me. The difference between not being straight and being straight was ginormous. If he's straight, it's roll through, tap, tap, in yeah. front. That I mean, was massive. Even if that drops, look where he landed. It actually would have been possibly better for Aaron if had it had if it had a drop. Yeah, yeah. And now it it looks like Aaron may have to make a combo shot in amongst this. Uh well, it, there is time if Aaron could have found a way to hold the cue ball to play a loss of turn with one of the reds at the top of the table. There is actually time to play that tactical exchange just about, but he may have to go here. Yeah. But he can't go in such a way that he doesn't leave time for Scott to play the three shots he would need. So the pressure here is massive. Try to leave an angle. Oh, this is this is actually really clever from from Aaron because, yeah. like you say, the angle. If he can get back to where he is now, that yep. sort of line, yep. he can play short position. Yep. Uh, and he really only needs to play to an area because if he doesn't want to land on the one to bottom left, he would have the one to middle. That's yep. that's a really good line. So he can just stand across table now, and one minute twenty nine left on the clock. You'd think if he gets these, there's going to be no time for riposte. All about this shot. Massive shot coming up for Aaron Davis. He's a touch short. He's a touch short. He's, he's, he's okay. just about got there. He's okay. Yeah. It's, it's actually perfect, isn't it? It is. Just went that extra roll. Yeah. That was all he needed. Just needs to drop this in and bounce the cue ball off the bottom cushion. Yeah, the red waiting. I'm surprised he played at that pace. That is brilliant. I thought he was going to just drop it in and leave the, the red for the middle. He should, he should use the beeps here. He should use all the way down to zero. Absolutely. He's Absolutely. not going to. What a moment for Aaron Davies, and he shows his emotion. That was fabulous. That's something you never see from Aaron Davies. Yeah, that I mean, was massive. But we have seen a clearance in 31 seconds. And if he'd have burnt the clock down then, he'd have left 25 seconds, 24 seconds. Well, we, know th we know the world record's 28. We know 30 seconds has been done by many players. It's not easy. Oh, it's a fabulous break. Dry and he's out. And oh, it is dry. Wow, it is dry. And he's going to shake hands here. A fabulous match. These two have delivered twice this weekend. First time round, it was a six red shootout. Scott Gillespie getting the victory. This time round, it is Aaron Davies with a brilliant finish to edge himself in front. And he books his place into a semi-final of the Pro Series. What a match. Let's hear from Aaron next.